Hi everyone, welcome back to the Retro Arcade. My name is Tycho, and I'm so excited to be sharing this video with you today. In this video, I am working on a postcard that I created for a Kickstarter that I ran last year for my book, Court of Snakes, This Desert Cage. In this particular video, I'm working on just the very, very basics, and it's always the most boring part of the process for me, but it seems to be something that people are interested in, and that's laying down flat color. If you are new here, welcome. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you never miss one of my art videos or book trailers. All right, let's get into it. If you haven't read Court of Snakes, this is probably the first time you're seeing Terran. Court of Snakes is a young adult novel that I released last year, and it is very Hunger Games, it's very Divergent, it's very Inkheart, so if you like any of those books or book series, you'll definitely like Court of Snakes. This desert cage takes place sometime in the distant future, and in the city of Sagano, it's eat or be eaten. Someone has to rule the masses. Taryn, who is one of the main characters of the book, has gone through something incredibly traumatic. He's lost both of his parents, and then not only that, someone has usurped him and taken away his birthright as the future leader of Sagano. If you're interested in reading the book, you can find more information about that in the description below, but let's talk about Taryn. At this particular stage in my artwork, there's nothing really special about what's being done. I'm just laying down a flat color underneath my line art so that I can get a good idea of how the colors will play with each other and also to understand what I want my background to look like. My goal with this piece was to have these postcards look like an old, early 20th century postcard that would have been sent out, and also I was very inspired by the style of Alphonse Mucha and other art deco art as well. Because the process at this point is really simple, I figured I would take a little bit of time to talk about Taryn as the main character and maybe answer some questions about him that I've never answered before. Taryn grew up really, really privileged, and part of his journey throughout the book is realizing how privileged he actually was. He has no idea that other people have it significantly worse than he does. He isn't necessarily a bigot about it, but he also wasn't actively doing anything to make himself a better person. After being removed from his royal position and after his parents are assassinated, he is forced to take refuge with a ruffian who really is somebody that is scary to Terran. He doesn't really like the idea that his parents could have possibly been a part of a system that was oppressing people or that there are legal systems and rules and laws and things that are in place that are also making people miserable or in some cases making it impossible for people to even stay alive. Even though Terran doesn't like the guy that he has been saddled with, this rebel leader, he calls himself the king, Terran does eventually grow to love the king as close as family. He doesn't really have any family left, he doesn't have any siblings, his two parents are gone, and so the king in a way becomes like a secondary dad. This book is definitely all about understanding new perspectives and about listening to people and the stories that they have to tell and then learning from them, and I think Taryn does learn a lot over the course of this book. What I think is the most interesting about looking back at this piece of artwork is the fact that during the making of this piece, I was also looking back at another piece of artwork, which you'll see little snippets of, I'm color picking from it throughout this video, that I had made long, long ago. Court of Snakes, This Desert Cage was originally published under a completely different name, and I also had not transitioned at that point, so it really was a different time for me. It was very weird working on this book again, and also working on this art again, looking back at not only how much I had grown in my writing, but also in my art. The other image was probably from, if I had to guess, around a decade ago, and I didn't know how to do anything when I was working on that artwork. My shading was really weak, my values were really weak, the movement in the piece is okay, but all in all, yikes. But that's okay, right? We learn, we grow, we get better, and it's always exciting to see at least progress in the little things, you know? What's something that you are incredibly proud of in your art that you've grown and learned from? I definitely think for me, when I look at my art now and I see that I've really leaned into line art and I really like to make expressive characters that are likable and interesting and have good color and all of those things that I've improved upon in terms of like character design, that's what makes me the most proud. 
I would love to hear about your all's art journeys. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you like about your art now, what you feel like you've gotten better at. I think the hardest thing for me at this point in the process was figuring out what I wanted to do with the borders of these postcards, because this particular postcard of Terran was one of two different postcards that I was releasing for the Kickstarter. The other one was of Parissa, who is another major character in this book. So whatever I did for this postcard would also be the same background for Parissa's postcard as well, and it was pretty important that I nailed down what I wanted and that it didn't look like poopy. I was kind of scared of the yellow a little bit, simply because the colors that are the most important in this book are blue and white and silver, and I didn't want the yellow to be too contrasted with the blue. I think it ended up turning out okay in the end. So fortunately, no mistakes were made and no regrets. No regrets. I think if I had the choice to do these types of postcards again for an upcoming Kickstarter, I definitely would. I really liked the format and also I liked how affordable they were to print. I went through Moo to print my postcards and it was a good decision. I really liked how they came out. My favorite part of my art process during this stage is actually, no joke, coloring everything in only because it's really soothing to me. It throws me back to the era of my childhood where all I wanted to do was color and coloring books. And this like triggers my primal child brain. And it's just really exciting to just color in lines again. I don't know about y'all, but I really enjoy that. <laughs> and it's something that I never really get tired of. Even though the flowers stressed me out, we got through it and the colors were laid down so I was prepared to go on and actually shade the thing. Let me know what you think. Do you like how the colors turned out? Thank you so much for making it through this whole video. I look forward to seeing you in the next part where 